think it's working. Cool. I need to turn on my fire. Your fire. Candle. <laughs> Your candle. Your candle. Very quiet flame. Have the smoke again with the incense. Now the fire, the flame. <laughs> so, have so technically, some water. technically, it's a fire side chat. <laughs> Just need earth. I think they said incense can be air. Then you need earth and water. Have you got your bottle of water there? I have. And have you got a plant or something near you? Then you're set. Um, no, I'm sitting on, on sort of the earth, sort of. Okay. <laughs> we'll go with that. You yeah. sorted it. So, what do you reckon? So, um, okay, we want to talk about healing today. Because, um, first of all, you are a healer and a good one at that, I might add myself. Um, how did you – well, first of all, let, let's go – how did you discover you could heal? Let's start there. Well, I – I, interesting. Uh, in my early 20s, I wanted to – I felt the urge to learn to meditate and discover more. And I didn't know what meditation was, didn't know what healing was. But the, the sentiment was there, the, the feeling was there. So um, I didn't have any preconceived ideas, didn't know where to go because no one in my circles did anything like that. And – Life is like this in a way. My, I had a, a dog, that, a Rottweiler, that I felt really connected to. So, and he, when he was a pup, when he was less than a year old, caught Parvo. And I was seeing him morning and night. And I said they had a really strong connect, really strong bond. So, I'd, I'd, this is how I discovered healing. I would visit him morning and night. And for morning and afternoon. At the so vets. Before, at the vets, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So before I went to work and after, and I was doing sort of contract work on doing roof restoration, I one afternoon or evening, I, I went and saw my dog after work, and he had a, a lump on his head. And like it just it sprang up out of nowhere. It wasn't there in the morning. And I called the vet nurse over and said, oh, what's, what's, what's this? What's going on here? And with, with Parvo, they thought he was on he was on death's door anyway, and, and they knew I was connected, so they they weren't going to tell me that you know that um, that he most likely wouldn't pull through. And the the only way they could get him from one pen to the other was by with a shirt of mine that had my scent on it. So then they they'd sort of pull in front of him, and he'd sort of try and walk to the next pen. That's how they could clean the, the pen out. And um, so he was that sick that when he was go to the toilet, stuff of blood would come out, and it's pretty on death's door. So, and that's when this lump appeared one afternoon, and the vet nurse come over and said, "Oh, I better, I better grab the vet." And he had a look at it and said, "If he gets any that lump on his head gets any bigger, he's going to have to drill into his head and drain it." I went, "Oh, this is on top of parvo," and went, "Oh no, okay." And he, so he went away, and uh, I was just there patting, patting him, and then. It's weird, like I've never done anything like this before. I put both my hands on the lump and I wasn't trying to do anything. It just happened. I, I, it's real weird. <laughs> it's like, I, like I had no control almost, but I wasn't trying to do anything. Put both my hands on, on, on his head. I looked up at the clock and I fell into a trance. And that sounds like a, that's the first time I'd experienced anything like that in my life. And I saw myself as a an eagle flying over a massive valley. I felt like somewhere in Canada or somewhere, not that I've been to Canada, but it was it was amazing. It was mountainous. So I was this eagle flying up, feeling the greatest sense of peace I've ever experienced in my entire life. And I was just in awe of the whole experience. And then you felt like it was about maybe 20 seconds of flying and soaring and looking down and feeling absolutely free. And then I snapped out of that trance state and I looked at the clock and a 15 minutes had gone past and oh. moved, took moved my hands from from my dog and uh, bear his name was and the lump was gone and I, as I was patting his head my hand went from cold to one side to the right side of his head it'd go to hot cold hot and went wow oh and I called the vet nurse over and 
she came over and just freaked out. Like this is 20 minutes or so after she, and the vet had assessed bear and yeah, she, she just, there's no way she just sort of freaked out and went away. And, and, and then I, that I went home that afternoon and back to my place and I said to my mum who had a, her back has been sore for, for years. She had a bit of an accident. She fell hard on a tailbone when she was young. I said, I'll just lay on the lounge for a sec. I'm just, I just had an amazing experience at, at this, at the vet. And I told her what happened and she lay down. I put my hands about an inch above her back, both my hands, and I just moved them around the, her, my, her back. And and then I sort of found the two places that I felt I should keep my hands. And mum went, oh, and I said, what? She said, I feel like your hands are burning me. And I said, that's just, she said, where your hands are, it's the two sorest parts of my back. And I, I said, well, that's where my hands are the hottest. It's amazing the synchronicities of how things happen when you discover things in yourself. And you're open to that possibility, of course. The following day, I went to work and I had a friend of mine that I, I got along pretty well with at work. Um, she had a panic attack and I went and put my hands on her shoulders and I didn't know what I was doing. Like, all the, I didn't know. Like, I hadn't been trained in anything. I just felt the, felt just to go and put my hands on her shoulders. And after about 10 seconds, she said, oh, you can, you can take them off. I said, I don't feel like I, I should. Mm. And then I kept them there for another 10 seconds and – and then I took my hands away and she looked at me like pale almost, <laughs> like going mm. from panic attack to shock. She said, just before you took your hands away, the panic attack ceased and everything became normal. So that was my introduction into healing. And then from there, I it's interesting. I, I, I went to in 1993, well, sorry, 94, 95, I came to Perth for the Western Reds. and. Uh, the family, my, my girlfriend that I um, had at the time, or that when I met over in Perth, her family was, was spiritually minded, and I got more interested in spirituality and discovered. Um, I did some courses in meditation and healing and that sort of thing. Did esoteric healing. The very first healing course I did in, in Perth, there was a, a course over ten. 10 sessions, so 10 day courses basically, or day sessions. And on the fifth one, I was helping, assisting the, the teacher and helping some of the students feel certain aspects or certain things. So it came very natural to me. Mm -hmm. And um, then I learned some, some um, what's, what's the other one that everyone does? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, it's not kinesiology, it's um, no, not uh, Reiki. Oh, sorry. Is it Reiki? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I learned some Reiki as well in, okay. in India, and um, and I learned pranic healing, and learned a number of different techniques. Ultimately, over the years, yeah, I, I was just I was just open to possibilities, and, yeah. and that just I let you could say circumstances just guide me in the right place at the right time, and just went with what I feel, and then, um, and also I. This would have assisted to some degree. I did my, you know, like most 21-year-olds, I did my diploma in clinical hypnosis when I was 21. And um, <clears throat> just so, because I was seeking understanding and, and wanted, um, you know, while playing football, I spoke at this briefly in one of the other chats. Um, I wanted to, to make the best decision on the football field and I realised that my mind wasn't as focused as I'd like it to be. So I was trying to, to discover how to mentor, to teach me how to, uh, to try and focus in a stronger way. And this was actually um, before my healing anyway. So this this may have assisted. <clears throat> I don't know if I've gone around in circles too much. No. But, um, so, yeah, leading up to this, uh, the healing experience I had with my dog, uh, when I had my mentor at 21, we, we did the Myers-Briggs test. Have you heard of the Myers-Briggs? Nope. Yeah, okay. It's it's a two hour questionnaire where it works out this it breaks up the mind how it basically works. And I was an ENTP, which was an extrovert and I can't remember. Oh, you see a personality test kind of thing. Yeah, it's sort of like a personality test, yeah. So okay, yeah. Talked about how your mind sort of works, how it's geared up in a sense, and I became more of an INTP ultimately. Oh, I have to look that I, up and do it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So it's interesting because because that um, I was hypnotized by my mentor and, and I, I learned ways to to focus and to you could program. I learned how to program myself for certain events, certain games. You know, it's, it's bordering on brainwashing in a sense where you know to destroy anyone, but you just you become absolutely focused and you can enhance your abilities in a sense. Yeah, so so I learned techniques to do it's like a self hypnosis technique in a way. Um, programming, pro, I learned how to program myself for a game. And there, there's things you can do. You can also you can work on like a lot of people before they prepare for a game, they, they might beat their chest. And I know foot, like footballers that would get angry and and beat their chest before a game. So that can make you strong to some degree, but it makes you tense as well. So there's things you can do. I learned ways you can actually trigger fight and flight where it makes you – there's a difference between um, becoming aggressive and having an adrenaline rush as opposed to fight or flight. Fight or flight, your response time is minimized. You, you're quick. You're like a, like a little bird that's just reacting really quick, looking around. You, you're prepared to fight or flight, obviously. Mm-hmm. With adrenaline hits, that's not necessarily quick. That's that's a bit sort of there's a bit of spillage there. It's a bit messier. You you that can slow you down potentially. So I learnt ways to harness one's ability to become more uh, more reactive quicker. You know, speed up your reaction time, and I actually did some exercises with we won the under 19s for Parramatta jersey flag and with this technique before the game, what most of the guys did. And your reaction time at the start of the game was just enhanced. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. So all these aspects just, I feel, prepared me for the possibility of meditation because I realized that you could actually sort of program yourself to some degree. You could you can um, enhance things or you can work through things. There's a lot of things you can do if you're open to the possibility. And this is, I think, the um, preparing at a young age and doing that, my diploma in hypnosis and learning how to program my mind definitely set the ball rolling to be able to do healing and these sort of things anyway. And although, like, it was natural and, you know, it just really transformed in the last 20 years anyway. But what I realized having the mentor and, and I would get in the head and I'd, I'd on the football field, I'd sometimes. I'd lose focus and I'd drop the ball or do something. It's like my emotional and my the um, the emotional turmoil I suffered when I was young, and you know by the by my intellect and falling into suffering mind and that sort of thing. When I discovered more of the mind aspect and how to focus, what pushed me into that was the emotional turmoil I felt within. So. Learning to focus on the mind and and program the mind was effective and and pretty powerful, I felt, but it didn't resolve any emotional turmoil within. So I still felt there was so I could program myself for a game, but I still felt there were uh, there were things for me to resolve. So and that's what spurred me, drew me into wanting more and wanting to meditate. And like with rugby league, the processes I did was very effective. About obviously injuries and a few things and uh, some frustrations were against me in a sense, and that's where I feel potentially I could have done more. And and not there's anything wrong. I'm happy with what I've done, what I've achieved. But I feel like there's a different path for me ultimately. It's interesting whenever I was playing football, when I decided I wanted to go really hard and really focus and go further in in, foot, in rugby league, I'd, I tend to get injured. <laughs> it's real weird. And when I when I focus so hard, I, things went better. It's like just got to me that it wasn't there were other things for me mm-hmm. so, and it took me a long time to accept that because oh, i like playing rugby league but um the things that i've discovered within myself i wouldn't have wanted it any other way mm-hmm. so oh, that's a roundabout way of <laughs> talking about the healing <laughs> i don't know how if it's if it's um if it'll flow okay but that's just how it unraveled but yeah. um Healing. Do you want to talk yeah. about how you actually do it? Like, do you visualize it? Do you feel it? Do you sense it? Do you, um, is it something that you guide or it guides you? Or, uh, that's a 
pretty deep question, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that I expect from you? <laughs> it, it, um, like the pranic healing and the other healing te- techniques and the esoteric healing, which is like triangulations and that sort of thing. So it's triggering certain aspects within. I don't want to go too much into that, but mm. like you, you can you can enhance, you can work on um, certain aspects to help the accessing energy from food, and you can you know you can work on um, certain aspects with the pineal gland as well, and um, so you can you can spark them in a sense. Mm-hmm. So that's that's through esoteric healing and like that's a lot of that's triangulations and different things. So you're using your third eye and your awareness, you're focusing and you're using both hands as well. That's not you're not touching. Mm-hmm. So you're just putting a, a running a certain a particular circuitry of energy through certain aspects. It's like um uh, like a meridian trail in a sense, following certain meridians, but it's it's working certain energy points. So I use a combination of that and the you know the pranic healing when I did that it was you you're giving th- certain aspects to focus on and you, mm-hmm. you you're tracing the pathways in the body to see what flows and what doesn't flow mm-hmm. and so with the the other techniques I learned you, you're following certain sequences like uh, I guess um, you know I'm not a doctor but following a certain signs like with a chart like as a doctor and you, you're unraveling from there but it's really changed now where I get a sense of I just put my awareness on someone's body, and uh, and I'll talk to them and see how it's, it's unique. What because I, I use my intuition now. I use the, the combination of what I've learned in the past, my intuition. So and on speaking to them, I can get a sense of certain fears within, certain um, inhibitions or or fears that can restrict flow within the body. And mm-hmm. I tend to, through speaking to someone and feeling tuning in, I tend to feel get a sense of the pathway and what what the obstacle is. So then, the way I heal, I tend to speak to someone about um, certain entrapments of their own thoughts and how it relates to their body, and then ways to alleviate um, a sense of suffering. For example, if you've got a, a pain somewhere, this is how I interpret things anyway. We have a pain somewhere. You can realize, for example. Like your solar plexus or sacral can be to do with desires and that sort of thing. And then if you can't let go of certain desires, then it can create pains or it can restrict flow. If you can't let go of something, if, then it doesn't flow that well. So when you you let go to, to more possibilities within the self, then energy flows through that or that chakra, for example, your solar plexus. And then when things are flowing, that can be removed. So what I like to do is to speak about possibilities of understanding and possibilities of something more and to see through, help people see through fear. And as they do that, I do energy work and I I remove or help um, alleviate some pains and um, help the body flow. Mm. So it's very esoteric in a sense and very intuitive. But the results, and you've obviously had a sense of and experienced a number of my, the things that I do. So this is healing within the body, but it's also mm-hmm. it also can be within certain areas or from you know uh, around a house or under the house or um, in any place in particular. Yeah, they- no, you definitely helped us with that. Especially my daughter Annika, who's uh, in their bedroom, kept feeling uncomfortable in there, and um, and she she wasn't scared but she's just uncomfortable she didn't feel like she was safe to sleep in there without us so she tended to tended towards her and come into our bedroom at night since and i remember just a few was it the other week that you actually helped her out again and uh she was in her room and he went from she was in her room but she she still felt not completely at ease and the second that you tuned in she felt like a complete shift and she said, oh, my God, it feels amazing. Yeah. So, well, and that – because you put salt on the window, that that was that mm, incident. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, yeah. under the ground. And so the way I perceive things – because it is, I don't feel it, it matters so much how people perceive things. Someone might get – perceive one thing, I might perceive another. It's the mm. result that matters. So, yeah. like, I, I feel – should I? I'll go there and we'll see how we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like with with people. If you want something from another person, it feels like what I get a sense of is like 
tentacles almost like it's like you're reaching out and like if energies if there's something if there's something that doesn't flow or something that's feeding off you know everything's energy and and things feed off you know everything seems to react to everything and everything feeds off everything to some degree it doesn't mean that's necessarily eating devouring but mm. you know, everything seeks an energy source so i feel sometimes things under the ground and based on the energy of the ground itself or certain ideas certain fears uh, negativity uh, it's often steered through fear and whether one's aware of it or not but and sometimes it's just, it's just in the ground so it's it's like a, even the blue bottles you know you know the blue bottles have they have a lot of tentacle type things and that sting mm. yeah it's almost like you can you can you can scr- you can etherically pull that away and then when you do that the instantly places can change and there's mm. other things you can do there's energetic netting and different things that sort of you can create or have created in the past as you know mm-hmm. um to change the energy of the whole house and balance out certain how things flow. The more in touch with yourself you are, the, the greater the potential of you to access and help others anyway. But mm-hmm. I, I feel there's a, there's an entrapment with healing. It took a long way to get to this part, but <laughs> but <laughs> I've done performance enhancing hypnosis. I did this in the 90s with first grade footballers. I would visualize and I do a certain technique in hypnosis where they were – I took them on a journey and that experience and I'd look look at the person that's in front of me and think, okay, what are their abilities? So, mm-hmm. and if they weren't, you know, if they're playing rugby league, for example, and they weren't massive, they weren't a forward, it's, you're not going to go and say you're, you're the strongest, you're, you're really strong, you're going to be, you know, busting through tackles. You wouldn't do that because mm-hmm. you know, they, they might feel that and think that and they might maybe be stronger, but there's other guys that's going to be stronger. So you can't say you're going to be the strongest out there so you'll say, okay, you look at their strengths. Okay, you're going to be your reaction time is going to be enhanced. You're going to be feel feel the the triggering within the body, the response, feel it sparking mm. quicker than it's ever ever sparked before on you. And this is what I, I do. So, um, so then their openness to the potential of more enhances their abilities. In my experience, and this had some pretty amazing results. So. Even in this, I wouldn't. I get them to see, get them to visualize, but I wouldn't. I'd never say you are the strongest or you are the mm-hmm. fastest. And I, but so, and I feel it's right to do that. And but you're you tapping into the possibility, and you're encouraging and opening themselves to more. Mm-hmm. That can be pretty profound. And so. Well, I was just thinking it's something that you need to be sensitive to as well is the, if someone's not ready to, to take certain steps or whatever, you, there's no point healing someone if they're not ready to, to heal themselves because then it's just, I mean, you might do the healing for them and then it just bounces straight back because um, they're not in the right place for um, that full healing yet. You need well, that, to sort of take smaller steps. Yeah, I agree. So you, you sort of you're planting seeds to some degree. So, mm. like if, if someone came to me for healing, like mm. I'm not actually, um, to be honest, I'm not really interested in you. You know me, in, yeah. in people coming to see me regularly every week. Yeah. Like I, I'd rather like I'm not I'm not interested, I want I don't want people and you know I could probably do pretty well, and maybe it's silly of me I don't know but. Mm. Um, I'm not interested in healing people unless they want to change something within themselves because yeah. I feel everything to some degree, and there's karmic ramifications. There's, there's, you know, family karma. There's your own karma. There's all sorts of things, which is, you know, action playing itself out from past and all sorts of things. And I feel, mm-hmm. you know, when you discover truth within yourself and you become clearer, you, you know, there's still action in in motion, you know, karma playing itself out. So that doesn't necessarily change the minute you discover yourself and discover your heart you still have to play mm. itself out but it just means that the going forward the karmic ramifications of your choices um because karma isn't good or bad it's just the the result of your actions and your thoughts mm. everything so you, you set th- certain things in motion and if there's things happening or there's there's certain karmic ramifications in action and you discover your heart in this moment or in any moment doesn't mean that the stuff that's in motion from your past choices ceases that still plays itself out but going forward that the coming ramifications or the the benefits of your actions uh starts changing 
So to change, I really feel within myself to change others or what, what they, you know, change their experience or to bring about healing, the first thing in my mind almost always is the possibility, well, I'd say always, is the possibility of something more changing how they think. Mm. So rather than just say, come in, I'll fix you, I'll heal you, have it, do a healing session, I always uh, speak first. I always bring about understanding first or or look to understand more within the person. And you, you've since you've known me, I've always been this way, you're healing yeah. yourself or, or anyone, not that I've had to do much, but there's always the mental understanding first before I do anything. Yeah, so and, they can start helping themselves as well as you helping them. Absolutely. And, and they understand yeah. that they are, you know, to within varying degrees, they are, they are the result of their thoughts, their ideas, their identifications with yeah. or their identifications because there's could be multiple you know within themselves so they have to start letting that go and preparing mm. and opening up to more yeah and where it's just this this is just and this is why I, i'm not big on stereotypes like i've you know i, I come under with myers briggs intp it doesn't mm. define me mm. no I'm a, I'm a leo it doesn't yeah define me i've got characteristics of these things but yeah i'm more than that as yep. is everyone so being open to that possibility means there are more possibilities. So mm-hmm. I just really feel that um, it's important and confronting at the same time. Like it, so it's some people may feel confronted even if they come to me for a healing because I talk about things that people may not want to confront. And not that I'm intrusive, you know, but I ask questions on how do you feel about this or or how's that working for you or, or you know if they and I, I really um, it's important for me to do it before I do healing, and not so always. It's not always like this, but mostly it's like this. That mm-hmm. when you change and become open to possibilities, then greater healing takes place. Yeah, and the result of the healing can be longer lasting. <laughs> because if if you come to me or anyone comes to me and they don't change anything about how they think and feel, or they're acting, everything's identical. It's like saying, well, can you come to me and cure my, you know cure my hangover because I want to go drinking tonight. It's like, mm. nah, nah, you know, not really. <laughs> like, And and even this, oh, I'll pay you 50 bucks. It's like, yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want true change. I want true change. Yeah. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm out there. That's just, I, I want, you know, it's just, and it, you know, there's nothing wrong. If you want to drink, want to have it, fix yourself and go and, you know, get someone to heal you so you can live exactly how you're living, well and good. That's okay. Mm. And, and not to say it's, it's not always your own fault. This, like I said, there's karmic things. There's so much going, so much more. But like you, you can sort of get a sense. You can trace back. Off, well, I can trace back to see whether it's linked through this life or past lives, whether you believe in it or not, each to their own. But this is how I do things. I, I sort of I link as much as I can. I, I can trace links, whether it's to someone else or, you know, I've told people in the past that, oh, you've been, I feel like there's a, like, a, you know, they talk about someone that they're with and I go, oh, I feel like they've they put a little hex on you or something. Mm. I get a sense. Oh, oh, really? And then I went back to that person and said, oh, did you do this? Oh, actually, yeah, yeah I did. Mm. You go, oh, who, who, who told you? Oh, a, a guy at work or, you know, a mate of mine who I don't mm. know, who they don't even know. It's like, how? It's like, so everything can be traced ultimately. It's just a ma- matter of um, being open to that possibility as well. You know, I don't see all, can do all. It's not like that at all, but. It's just being open to possibilities and like a, I used a clairvoyancy in a sense like there's clairvoyance out there. I, I use it in a way of um, trying to track and trace and heal because mm. because all trace energies yep. to varying degrees. And I haven't heard anyone else talk about this, but this is how I see it. We all trace energies. So, you know, if you if you tell me about your friend or if you tell me about anyone, I'll get a sense of them mm-hmm. and how you feel about them just by um, feeling what you're saying and, and the energy yeah. like things energy. So, yeah. uh, but then the, the, this is where a, a difference between a, a, a great healer and a, a, a okay healer, you can, someone can talk about an experience and it may mis misunderstood the experience. And then you, you're tracing their misinterpretation of an experience of someone or something mm-hmm. as opposed to you can heal someone from an experience, but it doesn't mean a person's necessarily bad that, spark that experience so it's mm. distinguishing someone else's projection to yeah. getting a sense of what the person is actually like that they're talking about yeah so there's many things to unravel it's, it's mm. seems 
but you can't get lost in the head. You have to go on field. You have to trust your gut and intuition. And the more you trust it, the stronger it gets. And yeah. I've been doing this sort of for well, over 20 years. So that's how I try and harness my, I guess, to some degree, clairvoyancy skills or understanding of things. Awesome. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Thanks for listening into an insight into my healing. Stay tuned for part two.